Welcome to the National Museum of Anthropology, one of the four buildings in the National Museum Complex in Manila. The National Museum of Anthropology was built in the 1940s during the American colonial regime under architect Antonio Toledo of the Bureau of Public Works. It was inspired by the design of Daniel Burnham for Manila, which was based on the American concept of connecting key monuments and public buildings by a system of roads and rotondas. The Burnham plan includes an extended park with views of Manila Bay and a government center. The building was barely finished when World War II began. The three buildings in the National Museum complex were not spared from the heavy bombing during the last days of the campaign to liberate Manila. The collections of the museum were damaged and burned from the wreckage. After the war, the building was rebuilt and occupied by the Department of Finance. Thus, it became known as the Finance Building. In 1998, it was refurbished to house the archaeological and ethnographic collections of the National Museum of the Philippines in time for the centennial celebration of the Declaration of Philippine Independence. Named as the Museum of the Filipino People, it was opened to the public in June 1998. The exhibitions focused on cultural heritage, giving a deep sense of pride in our identity as Filipinos. It was renamed as the National Museum of Anthropology in 2016. The building was dedicated for the archaeological, maritime and underwater cultural heritage, and ethnographic collections. The ground floor houses the museum library, the offices of the research divisions, and the repository of the maritime and underwater cultural heritage division. In the courtyard is a traditional Ifugao house from the municipality of Mayawyao in the province of Ifugao. The exhibitions are located on the 2nd, 3rd, and 4th floors. The 5th floor serves as the repository of the National Ethnographic Collection and the shared laboratory of the three research divisions. The main entrance of the National Museum of Anthropology is the Marble Hall facing the Agrifina, or the Agriculture and Finance Circle. It serves as an orientation area for viewers and a function hall for special events and occasions. The building has 15 permanent exhibitions. Starting at the second level is the Palayok Gallery. Palayok, the ceramic heritage of the Philippines, presents the ceramic tradition of the Philippine Islands from the earliest appearance of pottery in the Neolithic period or New Stone Age to modern or contemporary times. It features the range of ceramics recovered from different archaeological sites in Batanes, the northernmost island in Luzon, to Sarangani in Mindanao. It highlights the craftsmanship of early communities and the significant role of ceramics in our culture. Among the significant collections showcased in the exhibition are three ceramics declared as national cultural treasures. The quadrangular burial jar from Maitum in Sarangani, the blue and white plate with flying elephant design from Lena Shoal shipwreck site in Palawan, and the Celadon light green glazed jar from Marinduque. These also represent the three common types of ceramics comprised of earthenware, stoneware, and porcelain found in archaeological sites. These ceramics vary in the type of clay used and basically in the firing temperature. Earthenware is fired at about 800 degrees Celsius to 1200 degrees Celsius. Stoneware between 1200 degrees Celsius to 1400 degrees Celsius. And porcelain above 1400 degrees Celsius. Still on the second level is the Treasures of San Diego, an evidence of the Manila galleon trade during the 16th century common era. The San Diego was originally used for trade from the Philippines to Acapulco in Mexico and vice versa. It was converted into a warship against the Dutch naval fleet. Unfortunately, it sank near Fortune Island in Nasugbu, Batangas on December 14, 1600, after a naval engagement with Mauritius, the Dutch flagship. Among the reasons for the misfortune of the San Diego is attributed to the lack of experience in maritime affairs of its captain, Lieutenant General Antonio de Morga, and the overloaded cargo. The ship could only accommodate 700 tons, but it was loaded with 1,500 tons when it was converted into a battleship. More than 35,000 large and small objects were recovered from the wreck in 1992 and 1993 including more than 800 jars and over 5,000 Chinese blue and white ceramics. The gold seal of Antonio de Morga, 
which was recovered from the site, authenticated the identity of San Diego. This was recorded in his book, Sucesos de las Islas Filipinas, or Historical Events of the Philippine Islands, published in 1609 and annotated by Dr. Jose Rizal. The Manlilikhanang Bayan or National Living Treasures Hall honors the 16 Filipinos who were conferred the Gawad sa Manlilikhanang Bayan from 1993 to 2016 by presenting their masterpieces. The work of a Manilikhanang Bayan is presumed to be an important cultural property, second to the National Cultural Treasure, the highest category of cultural property. A Manilikhanang Bayan has the responsibility to transmit their skills to the younger generation and to donate a sample of their work to the National Museum of the Philippines. This exhibition was made possible through the collaboration among the Gawad sa Manilikhanang Bayan Executive Committee of the National Commission for Culture and the Arts, Office of Deputy Speaker and Representative Loren Legarda, and the National Museum of the Philippines. Faith, Tradition, and Place Bangsamara Art from the National Ethnographic Collection the exhibition is a visual exploration of the rich cultural heritage of the Islamic groups in the southern Philippines and how they are interconnected within the context of Islamic and Southeast Asian traditions. It features the material cultures of the region, known for their ornate decorations and ornaments, in various social, economic, political, and ritual contexts. Bangsa Moro is derived from the term Bangsa, which means nation and Moro as a Spanish appellation to all Muslims in southern Philippines. Lumad Mindanao features the material cultures of the 13 Lumad groups represented in the National Ethnographic Collection. It explores the significance of Mindanao natural reserves and resources to Lumad identity as well as their experiences and established ties with neighboring groups, specifically the Muslims, through the years. Lumad is a Visayan term which means born from the earth. They are non-Muslim groups in southern Philippines who nurture and are nurtured by Mindanao's rich natural and cultural heritage as manifested in their traditions and practices. The archaeological treasures or Cabanang Lahi showcases the secondary burial vessels such as burial jars, limestone urns, wooden coffins, and associated grave goods recovered from different cave sites in the Philippines. Secondary burial practice involves the reburial of skeletal remains with corresponding ritual. The exhibition highlights some of the declared national cultural treasures of the Philippines, such as the complete anthropomorphic jar recovered from Ayub Cave in Maitum, Sarangani, the famous Manungal jar from Lipuan Point in Quezon, Palawan, and the Leta Leta jarlet from El Nido, also in Palawan. The Manango jar depicts the earliest evidence of ancient Filipino belief in the afterlife as represented by the two prominent figures on the top cover while the Leta Leta jarlet is probably an example of offering during rituals. BI Tradition, Ecology, and Knowledge Among the Philippine Negrito Communities BI is an ITA term for life. This gallery features the National Ethnographic Collection gathered from the Negrito communities in eastern and central Luzon, Palawan, Panay Island in the Visayas, and Bamanua in Mindanao from 1903 to present. The exhibition provides an overview of the previous studies and documentation by early ethnographers and Filipino researchers on the Negrito groups. It presents their direct and deep connections with nature as reflected in their material culture and shows their current situation amidst the degradation and annual thinning of their home, the rainforest. This gallery highlights a skull cap retrieved in the 1960s during an archaeological excavation in Tabun Cave in Quezon, Palawan. It is the earliest skull cap of a modern human found in the Philippines. Another highlight is the fossilized right tibia, which was also collected from the Tabun Cave in 2000. It is one of the earliest human remains found in the Philippines. Now, it is believed that the oldest evidence which dates to 67,000 years ago, was discovered at Kalau Cave in Cagayan. On the fourth floor are the thematic exhibitions starting with Entwined Spheres, Baskets and Mats as Containers, Conveyors, and Costumes. The exhibition acknowledges and honors local basket, mat, and hat weavers in the different regions of the country. 
It highlights the significance of baskets and mats as part of both tangible and intangible Filipino cultural heritage through the different materials, techniques, and designs as entwined in their functions, as accessories and costumes, as containers of both secular and sacred objects, and as conveyors in fishing, agriculture, as well as in most daily activities. By Bayin. This exhibition features and promotes the awareness of the early writing systems used by ancient Filipinos as demonstrated from the earliest artifacts such as the Laguna Copper Plate, the Calatagan Pot, and the Montreal Stones to archival materials like legal documents and published books during the Spanish colonial era and the ethnographic objects used by the indigenous communities in Mindoro and Palawan. Baybayin is also used in millenarian movements in their amulets and talismans and as body adornments or tattoos to mark Filipino identity among the youth both in the Philippines and abroad. Government agencies and universities have also incorporated Baybayin in their logos. Baybayin comes from the root word Baybay, meaning to spell. It consists of 17 characters or alphasyllabic symbols of 3 vowels and 14 consonants, but when combined with the vowel modifying marks called goodlits, the characters increased to 45. In the 16th century, Baybayin was widely used by the coastal groups of Tagalog, Bisaya, Iloko, Pangasinan, Bicol, and Pampanga. This was eventually replaced by the Roman alphabet but retained in the islands of Mindoro, Buhid Mangyan, Hanuno Mangyan, and Palawan, Palawan, and Tagdonwa until today. Hiblanang Lahing Filipino, the artistry of Philippine textiles. This gallery showcases the traditional textiles produced by various indigenous and cultural communities in the Philippines. It is remarkably interesting to know how these textiles were made, the materials used for the fibers, and the technologies used in weaving the fabrics. On display are samples of clothing ensemble indicating the various functions of the textiles. The gallery displays a death blanket called Kinutian, used by the highest members of the Ifagal community known as the Kandangyan, and the Banton burial cloth fragment, the oldest known textile in the Philippines, recovered from Banton Island in the province of Romblon. Rice, Biodiversity, and Climate Change Exhibition This features collections on rice from the National Museum and the Philippine Rice Research Institute and evokes rice's significance in the Filipino culture in terms of science, traditional knowledge systems, and heritage. It also aims to support the country's continuing campaign to be self-reliant on rice through responsible rice consumption. One section features the collection of bulul from the province of Ifugao, which are used in ceremonies associated with rice production. The gallery also features material cultures associated with rice cultivation and consumption from different ethno-linguistic groups such as agricultural tools, baskets used in crop care and maintenance, rice measure, harvesting knife, rice wine jar, mortar, and winnowing trays. The last gallery on the fourth floor is the reception room, which is used for changing or temporary exhibitions. It also serves as a lecture or function room. On exhibit from May 2021 to January 2022 is Tabawan, the island of pre-Islamic rituals and traditional practices in Tawi-Tawi. The photo exhibition features 57 photographs taken by Paul Kembao in Tabawan Island in Tawi-Tawi, documenting seven rituals that mark the cycle of life of the Sama Tabawan people. These are Pagunting, Pagtubas, Pagkawin, Pai Baha'u, Pagdawata, Pagjamo Bohe Deya, and Pagkamboan. The elements in the rituals highlight the combination of indigenous shamanic practices with Islamic beliefs, proving the confluence of cultures in the island as a result of centuries of contact with peoples from neighboring countries through trade, alliances, religious evangelization, among others. On your next trip or vacation to the Philippines, include in your itinerary a day or two to visit the National Museum Complex in Manila. You may also check out the other 16 regional, area, and site museums from Batanes to Holoc.